Hello, welcome to Gus McDowell Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. Today, we're playing Sonorous Combat Systems Fleet Command, an operational level naval combat simulator. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to show your support with a donation, the links are in the description. In this campaign, The Dragon and the Eagle, we look at a series of fictional naval clashes between America and China in the alternate 1990s world of Fleet Command. In this scenario, Strait of Malacca, China's People's Liberation Army PLA forces have conducted a massive incursion into Burma, now known as Myanmar. The port and airport at Rangoon, or Yangon, have been converted to PLA military operating bases. The Burmese government in exile in Thailand has requested US, Allied and United Nations assistance to force the withdrawal of the PLA forces. A large People's Liberation Army Navy PLAN force, supported by Russian surface and subsurface units positioned on a north-south axis in the Andaman Sea, has taken control of the northern approaches to the Strait of Malacca. Your mission is to engage the PLAN Russian naval forces in the Andaman Sea, blockading the Strait of Malacca, and conduct air and tomahawk strikes against the PLAN Naval and Air Forces facilities at Rangoon. You will rendezvous en route with a force of up to two British and two Australian surface combatants, which may be part of your alliance during this operation. Mission Tasking Continue on your easterly transit to engage PLAN and possible Russian forces in the Andaman Sea, blockading US and Allied forces from entering the Strait of Malacca. You will rendezvous with a force of up to two British and two Australian surface combatants, which may be part of your alliance during this operation. You must neutralise the blockading forces to allow a second carrier battle group en route from the Western Pacific clear passage through the strait en route to the Sri Lanka area of operations. Clear a path with the aircraft carrier battle group. Good hunting. This is the area of operations, the Andaman Sea west of the Malacca Strait. It is 0900 hours, overcast with thick cloud cover above 10,000 feet. To the south is Indonesia and the province of Aceh, which was badly affected by a tsunami in 2004. Moving north, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, part of India. To the southeast, the west coast of Thailand. Moving north, the Kra Isthmus and the Gulf of Thailand to the east. Continuing north, the coast of Burma, now known as Myanmar. The port, Rangoon or Yangon, is around here. And we have two unknown radar contacts to the west. Let's examine friendly forces. And enable ship labels. The American Carrier Battle Group is screening the USS Carl Vinson CVN-70. Operated by the United States as a Nimitz-class nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, she is 1,020 feet in length with a beam of 235 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors modelled in the game include surface ESM, visual, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, fire control radar and active intercept. She carries 24 enhanced Sea Sparrow missile surface to air missiles and cannon. Vinny's air group consists of one squadron of 12 F-14 Tomcats capable of anti-surface warfare and anti-air warfare missions, two squadrons totaling 22 F-A-18 Hornets capable of anti-surface warfare, anti-air warfare and strike missions with two airborne, four SH-60F Seahawk helicopters capable of anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare missions, four EA-6B Prowlers capable of anti-surface warfare and strike missions, two 
two E2 Hawkeye AWACS aircraft. One squadron of 10 S3 Vikings capable of anti-submarine warfare and anti-surface warfare missions. And two ES3 Viking electronic attack aircraft for anti-surface warfare. The outer screen is provided by the USS Philippine Sea, CG-58. Operated by the United States as a Ticonderoga-class vertical launch system guided missile cruiser, she is 531 feet in length with a beam of 56 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar long range, ship surface radar medium range, and fire control radar. She carries 98 SM-2 surface to air missiles, 10 Tomahawk land attack missiles, 12 Mark 46 torpedoes, 10 Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles, 8 Harpoon missiles, 4 Mark 50 torpedoes, guns and cannon. The Tyco class is a good all-rounder, capable of long-range anti-air warfare, anti-submarine warfare, anti-surface warfare and strike missions. Also USS Port Royal, CG-73, another Tyco. Next, the inner screen provided by the USS Samuel B. Roberts FFG-58. Operated by the United States as an Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigate, she is 409 feet in length with a beam of 48 feet and maximum speed of 29 knots. Sensors include high frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range and fire control radar. She carries 36 standard Missile 1 medium range surface to air missiles, 4 Harpoon missiles, 8 Mark 46 torpedoes, 4 Mark 50 torpedoes, guns and cannon. The Sam Roberts is a close escort to the carrier to rescue downed pilots. First of the picket ships is the USS Curtis Wilbur, DDG-54. Operated by the United States as an Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer, she is 460 feet in length with a beam of 57 feet and maximum speed of 32 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar long range, ship surface radar medium range and fire control radar. She carries 68 SM-2 surface-to-air missiles, 6 Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles, 10 Tomahawk land attack missiles, 8 Harpoon missiles, 8 Mark 46 torpedoes, 4 Mark 50 torpedoes, guns and cannon. The other picket ships are USS Porter, DDG-78, also an Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer, and USS Mitcher, DDG-57, also an Ali Burke class guided missile destroyer. Lurking in the port rear and acting as missile truck is USS Hala, DD-907. Operated by the United States as a Spruance class destroyer, she is 531 feet in length with a beam of 55 feet and maximum speed of 33 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, low frequency passive sonar, ship air radar medium range, ship service radar medium range, and fire control radar. She carries eight enhanced sea sparrow missile surface to air missiles, 30 Tomahawk land attack missiles, 18 Mark 46 torpedoes, 21 Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles, eight harpoon missiles, four Mark 50 torpedoes, guns, and cannon. Next, the combat air patrol. Two FA-18 Hornets. Operated by the United States as a fighter attack aircraft, the FA-18 Hornet has a maximum speed of 1,080 knots, maximum altitude of 50,000 feet, and range of 1,800 nautical miles. Sensors include aircraft visual, aircraft radar medium range, and aircraft ESM medium range. The Hornet carries seven AIM-120 AMRAAM air-to-air missiles, four AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air missiles, and guns.
Next, subsurface assets. Lurking beneath the waves in the Andaman Sea is USS Santa Fe, SSN 763. Operated by the United States as a Los Angeles 688 improved nuclear powered submarine, she is 351 feet in length with a beam of 51 feet, maximum speed of 32 knots and maximum depth of 1,473 feet. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, low frequency passive sonar, surface ESM, visual and ship surface radar short range. She carries 26 Mark 48 advanced capability or ADCAP torpedoes, six Tomahawk land attack missiles, and six Tomahawk anti-shipping missiles. Comms are available in 20 minutes. To the south is USS Miami SSN 763, another Los Angeles class submarine. Comms are available in 10 minutes. Let's move now to the Allied fleet. First, HMS Monmouth, FFG-235. Back then, Her Majesty's ship, now of course, His Majesty's ship. Operated by the Royal Navy as a Duke-class guided missile frigate, she is 393 feet in length with a beam of 44 feet and maximum speed of 28 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, low frequency passive sonar, and fire control radar. She carries 12 Stingray torpedoes, 8 Harpoon missiles, 32 ESSM surface to air missiles, guns, and cannon. Next, HMS Cornwall, FFG-99. Operated by the Royal Navy as a broadsword class guided missile frigate, she is 432 feet in length with a beam of 44 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, low frequency passive sonar and fire control radar. She carries six Enhanced Sea Sparrow Missile Surface Day Missiles, four Exocet Missiles, six Stingray Torpedoes and Cannon. Moving to HMAS Perth, DDG-38. Operated by the Royal Australian Navy as a Perth-class guided missile destroyer, she is 409 feet in length with a beam of 47 feet and maximum speed of 30 knots. Sensors include medium frequency active sonar, active intercept, surface ESM, visual, ship air radar medium range, ship surface radar medium range, and fire control radar. She carries 36 SM-1 medium range surface day missiles, four Harpoon missiles, six Mark 46 torpedoes, guns, and cannon. You can see the American influence on her armament. And finally, HMAS Hobart, another Perth-class guided missile destroyer. Overall, these ships are capable of anti-submarine warfare and medium-range anti-surface warfare. But, their short-range anti-air warfare capability makes them vulnerable to enemy missile salvos. They will need to be protected. Before we start the mission, let's set the air threat axis. Running from the suspected airbase on the coast of Burma towards the carrier battle group. This serves as a visual reminder that the enemy is likely to send strike aircraft and missiles down that axis. We will need to defend. So, we will need to strengthen the combat air patrol with some fleet defenders. And send up airborne early warning aircraft. I also want to prepare some electronic warfare aircraft.
Let's also put the entire Tomcat squadron on alert. With the Tomcats providing combat air patrol, and the 1st Hornet Squadron also readying for anti-air warfare, I want the 2nd Hornet Squadron to focus on anti-surface warfare. and go to alert. Let's ready the helicopters. and alert half the Vikings for anti-submarine warfare. Green Deck, launch aircraft. Roger out. Let's start the mission. The combat air patrol go to MCON C and activate aircraft radar. They start conducting visual identification of Class B surface contacts. Track one, three, two, five. Is neutral surface. Neutral surface. These contacts are too close to the carrier for comfort. Classify track one, three, two, two. Roger out. VID track one, three, five, zero. Can do out. Will do. Then turn to identify a suspicious air contact looking to the southeast. A possible Class A target. Out. The Allied fleet is best at anti-submarine warfare, so they activate sonar. You are cleared to launch aircraft. Will do. Out. And prepare to launch anti-submarine warfare helicopters. Will do. Out. The carrier battle group also activates sonar but otherwise remains at MCOM-B with no unique emissions from radars. Will do. Out. Will do. Roger out. To the southeast, the Hornets are being jammed, offensive ECM, indicated by the red dot. Very suspicious. This is an electronic attack, so the enemy have fired the first shot, so to speak. But the only enemy platforms capable of doing this are the Russian Bear, Russian Badger, or Chinese Jian. And all would be operating in support of a surface fleet or strike aircraft. Over the horizon, the battle is joined. The carrier battle group's path of intended motion, or PIM, is to the east. The area between Aceh to the south and the Nicobar Islands to the north is a natural choke point into the Andaman Sea, where the enemy are likely to place submarines in ambush. Roger. The mission requires us to find and sink all enemy submarines, but it is a big area to search. This is why the fleet went to active sonar, which will act like a beacon and draw in those enemy submarines towards us and save us the trouble of finding them.
Meanwhile, the Air Unknown Contact is manoeuvring consistent with a military aircraft, not a civilian airliner. It has changed heading and altitude from 400 feet to 5,000 feet. Let's speed up the intercept. A Russian Tupolev Tu-142 Bear J. Class A threat confirmed. Fights on. Outside Sidewinder range. The Hornet engages with AMRAM. Fox 3. The aircraft is beautiful, but doomed. Drops chafe. Kill track one, three, five, zero. Splash 1 bear. High priority intelligence weapon received. The new combat air patrol aircraft are tasked to visually identify nearby surface vessels. Cornwall has launched the anti-submarine warfare helicopter. Out. The Lynx activates dipping sonar. Can do. Can do. And commences subsurface search. Back at the carrier, a Tomcat called Coldcat at launch. This means the catapult launcher failed. The Tomcat ditched. The aircrew ejected and were picked up by a boat from USS Samuel B. Roberts. The remaining Tomcat moves to cover the air threat axis and investigate a radar contact. As the Hornet moves to identify the craft shadowing the American fleet, the crew in the Combat Information Center of USS Haler make ready to launch Harpoon missiles. Just cargo ships, and everyone sighs with relief. No one had noticed they were holding their breath. ID track one, three, two, four, can do. Classified track one, three, three, six, can do. Roger out. The next surface unknown contact is moving at 13 knots, a bit fast for a civilian cargo ship or fishing vessel. While we are waiting on the Hornets, let's review messages. High priority tasking message received. You are ordered to protect the Australian and British surface forces under your command. If these forces receive greater than 50% damage, then this mission is a failure. Let's also review the intelligence. Intelligence message. A US destroyer escorting two US flagged merchants through the strait has been attacked and damaged by surface-to-surface -surface missiles launched by a People's Liberation Army Navy PLAN frigate. Rangoon Airport and Port have been taken over by PLAN military forces and are attempting to block the strait to all US forces. Russian forces may be cooperating with PLAN forces in the blockade of the strait. PLAN forces are also believed to be supported with several squadrons of Badger, Fencer, Flanker and Backfire strike aircraft. Significant submarine threat exists to shipping in and around the strait. High priority intelligence message received. Confirmation received that Chinese and Russian forces are working together to blockade the straits. Basically, World War III has started in the Andaman Sea of all places and confirmation that PLAN and Russian ships and aircraft are legitimate targets. 
protecting the Australian and British surface forces calls for a law cap or long-range combat air patrol. The two Hornets will conduct this duty at first. Another surface unknown contact moving at 13 knots. I suspect this first contact is a PLAN warship seeking to bring us to battle. So I'll mark a 75 nautical mile ring around the ship to indicate its likely surface to air missile range. Bad news is that this covers almost all our ships and aircraft. and another SAM ring around the second possible warship. The law cap moves west out of range of the second ship. Can do. To the north, another unknown surface contact. And five minutes until we can commence anti-submarine warfare and electronic warfare. High priority tasking received. Let's strengthen the combat air patrol. Green deck launch aircraft. Wilco. The unknown surface contact is a fishing vessel. Available for tasking. Over. The E-2 Hawkeye moves to the flight deck of the USS Carl Vinson. The airborne early warning radar will make a big difference. The Tomcats also move up to the catapult. They are assured it is now working properly, but they're clenched anyway. and a Prowler joins the Hawkeye on the flight deck. As a Seahawk readies. USS Miami is available for tasking. She is ordered to stay at comms depth. Let's review the messages. High priority tasking message received. You must neutralize the submarine threat in the Strait of Malacca by destroying all Chinese and Russian submarines. Identify track one, three, two, six, out. ID track one, three, two, six, can do out. This is a good time to pause the action for now and come back to the operation in the next episode. In this episode, the US carrier battle group is moving east into the Andaman Sea to break a Russian and PLAN blockade of the western entrance to the Malacca Strait. The combat air patrol downed a Russian Bear maritime patrol aircraft and the carrier air group is preparing for combat. In the next episode, the carrier battle group must strengthen the combat air patrol, start anti-submarine warfare and electronic warfare, and resolve the unknown surface contacts to the east. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.